Okay, so this is the network that we had on the previous tutorial. And what we said is that for this network, the pump that is required, it needs to have a total pumping heat of not less than 34.5 meters of water column and a discharge of not less than 2.5 liters. Okay, so this is the water that, that we want to take from our source all the way to tank T1. So what we are going to do today is to take the same network and run not in water gems but in Ethernet software and to see if we have the same results. That is what we are going to cover today. So if you're interested, just keep on watching. This is a very simple sketch of our network. And what we have here is our source, which is allocated around this area here. And also we have our destination point, which is allocated around this area. So what we need to do is to size a pump or to design a pump it, that will be able to pump water from this point, from this point here all the way to this point. And what we want to pump the discharge that we want to take from our source or the amount of water that we want to take from our source is 2 liters per second. Our source is located at 100 meters above mean sea level and also our destination point is located around 130 meters of course above mean sea level. Okay, And not just that, we have some few junctions here. So this junction here and also this junction of course with the appropriate or with the appropriate uh, elevation levels. So between the junctions we have the pipes so the first one here uh, has a length of 80 meters and also the second one here is 100 meter and the last one is 50 meters as i said we need to size a pump that will be able to pump two liters per second from our source which is located around this point here all the way to our to our destination point which is located around this elevation value so now that we have that brief introduction about our network, the next thing that we need to do is to draw and start designing our network in Ethernet software. So that is what we are going to do next. Let's proceed. Okay, so this is Ethernet uh, version 2.2 and it is opened already. So what I need to do is before I even start to draw my network, what I have to do is to make sure that I have the settings that I need for my project. And to do that, what I need to do is to go straight to the project, uh, this project here, and select the defaults. Okay, you can even go back, you can even go and select the analysis options. But for me, I prefer to go and select uh, the default. So, so from here, let me go straight to hydraulics. And um, what I need to do, because I am using SI units, Remember, because I'm using SI units, what I need to do is to, is to set here liters per second. And to not just that, the head loss formula that I want to use for my project is Hazen Williams. And um, I, I don't think if I have anything to change more, let me maintain the way they are. And uh, let me click OK. So from here, what I need to do is to draw my network. As you can see, this is our network. And from here, as I said, we have our source which is this one and also we have our storage tank here but for hydraulic modeling we we use the reservoir to model this kind of source okay let me go back here and select the reservoir start with the reservoir which is our source and also i have some few junctions here so junction number one which is this one and also junction number two then after that i have this a storage tank here so junction number one and two then storage tank let me minimize this and select junction number one. So junction number one, junction number two, and also I have a storage tank. So, so let me select this, which is as a storage tank and put it somewhere here. So now that we have our junctions ready, we need to find a way to link our junctions with the pipe. But in Ethernet, the only way we can model pipes is by using the links. Okay, so we are going to use link as a way to link our junctions in Ethernet software. Let me show you how we can do that. Okay, so let me go back here and select and select the and select add pipe. Okay, and let me start with uh, this one here. So this is the reservoir. Let me start with this and also let me link it with this one. And again, let me do it again and link it with uh, this junction here and also select it link with our uh, storage tank. Okay, so that is our network and uh, what I can do is to select this and move it somewhere. 
so let me select this and move it somewhere here so now that we have our junctions linked with the pipe what we need to do next is to provide the properties for each component okay so we need to provide the elevation data we need to provide the pipe length and so on and so forth so this is what we are going to do next let me show you how we can do that okay so i need to start or i can start with the reservoir so let me start with the reservoir okay so let me start with the reservoir and if i double click this reservoir here you can see what we need to provide is the total head also so the most important parameter that we need to provide for our reservoir is the total uh, total height which for our case let me go back here let me select this image the total pumping uh total pumping <laughs> the total height for our reservoir of or for our source is this 100 meters here so let me go back here and select and double click this one and provide 100 meters and uh, let me close this and also i need to provide the elevation data for this uh for this junction here or for this node here so if i go back here and select and deselect this one you can see the value for this junction number one is 110 and followed by followed by this one here which is has the elevation of 115 meters of course above mean sea level 110 and 115 let me go back here and select this one so this one has the elevation of 110 and also this one here has the elevation of 115 okay so let me go back here and select the storage tank so the properties of, of storage tank is let me go back here and select this uh, you can see the elevation for our for our storage tank is around 130 meters of course above mean sea level so let me go back here and select this and provide the elevation for our storage tank as 130 meters of course above mean sea level and uh, of course but we did not provide we are not provided with uh, the initial water level and also the minimum and maximum water levels so what i need to do here let me provide the minimum water level for this uh, storage tank as uh, 0 0.1 and also let me select the maximum as 3 of course let me maintain the maximum uh, level as 3 and let me close this one so after that what i need to do is to provide the uh, properties for my uh, pipes so i need to provide the properties for the for the pipes which so let me start with this one which has the length of 80 meters and also this one here which has which has a length of 100 meters and lastly this one here which has a length of 50 meters so let me go back here and uh, let me okay so let me double click this 80 100 then 50 so this one here has a length of 80 okay and this one here has a length of 100 and also this one here has a length of 50 meters okay so from this junction here to this storage tank the pipe between them has a length of uh, 50 meters and um, let me close this and also what i need to provide next let me take you back here I don't think if I have anything more to provide. Okay, so let me minimize this. So now that we have the properties of each component in our model, what we need to do next is to optimize our model. But before that, but before that, what I said earlier is that we are not going to use a combination of a reservoir and a pump to model our pump. Instead, what we need to do or what we are going to use is a is a junction or a node with negative demand but so far what we have been doing is to model our source with a reservoir of course that is, uh, that is a mistake what i'm going to do is to remove that uh, reservoir and replace it with the junction with a negative demand of course that is going to be a way that we are going to model our source okay our source which for our case is where our pump is installed okay so let me show you how we can do then from that we can we can continue with optimizing our model Okay, so from here, 
before we even move further let me uh, remove this uh, reservoir then let me replace it with node or a junction with negative demand okay so for our case our demand was 2.5 liters per second so let me let me remove this junction and replace it replace it with a node which is this one i need to provide the pipe which we had earlier with the length of 80 meters if i'm not mistaken the length was 80 meters the length of 80 meters and i'm letting close this and after that i need to provide here the elevation which which for our case was which for our case which for our case was 100 meters let me take it by 100 meters and also i also need to provide uh, 2.5 liters per second as a negative demand 2.5 liters per second as a negative demand so let me double click this and also provide the base demand as negative 2.5 okay so this is liters per second let me close this so if i double click this the length is 80 meters and also this one the elevation is elevation is 100 meters and also this one here is 110 okay so everything now is okay so what i need to do is to start optimizing my model okay so from here let me click run if i so for now i you can see i have some errors let me see it says invalid lower and upper levels for tank st1 okay okay so let me go back here so because here we have the error in our storage tank let me close this and select the storage tank here it said okay okay so what i need to do is to uh take this because the maximum level here is three meters let me put it at least at three meters okay at least for now you i can let me see okay so for now i don't have any errors again okay so in short is that the initial level is not supposed to be a uh, greater than the maximum uh, level okay so as far as a storage tank goes in ethernet or even in water gems the initial level is not supposed to be greater than the maximum level so, so let me close so let me close at uh, this one here and um i need to what i need to do is to go back here and select map and select map then for the links i want to display the flow okay and for the nodes i want to display the pressure and let me take this back here okay as you can see for now we don't have any value displayed but if i hover my mouse you can see that we have 2.5 liters per second so let me go back here and select options then let me select uh, notion and select display link value and also display the node values then after here let me uh, increase the font okay let me increase again a little bit up to 10 okay so this is what we have but we we still have some issues we still have some issues if you see you can see that the pressure that we are having for our junction is too much and also the flow around this area here it seems as though uh, it is zero okay what i need to do what i need to do so let me do this let me first increase a little bit my uh, pipe uh, pipe diameter let me increase the pipe diameter okay so let me provide the pipe diameter that i want for my uh for my pipes so let me put here 75 oh okay just uh, remember you need to provide the internal diameter of the pipes that is is very very important and here 75 and also the roughness i don't think if i changed the roughness so for this pipe here so since the pipe since the pipe material was uh, gi pipes or galvanized iron pipes let me go back here and select uh and select this one you can see for galvanized iron uh, pipes or gi pipes the hazen williams c is the hazen williams coefficient is 120 okay so let me go back here and select 120 as the roughness 120 and also this one here 120 and again uh this one here let me provide 
120 120 and let me close let me run again okay so i provided the roughness as 120 it seems as though we don't have any error if i run we don't have any error but we are still uh, stacking with uh, these uh, huge numbers of course in junctions it seems as though we still have some issues let me check okay so let me try let me check on young of course the demand is this one with negative 2.5 I don't think if I have any issue. So let me display for the nodes. Let me display elevation. If let me check, of course, the elevation values are okay. And uh, let me check again. Uh, I don't think if I have anything more, but why I don't have, I have here the flow as zero. Okay, so the flow here is zero. And even the velocity on, on this pipe here is zero. So what is the issue? Let me go back here and select for the in for the st storage tank. Okay, let me select this 2.5, uh, 3.2. It seems for now we don't have any error after changing this value here. Okay, so the, here is the point. We had such an error because of two reasons. So number one is because the way we set our minimum and maximum level, they have the same value which is three but what we needed to do for that case is either to make sure that at least the maximum level for our storage tank is greater than the minimum level okay so even if you opt to go with the minimum and maximum levels both has the same uh, value which for our case was three meters so the maximum level is three meters and also the minimum level is three meters what you needed to do is to make sure that at least your storage tank is allowed to overflow Okay, so those are the two solutions. Let me show you a little bit. Okay, so this is what we had uh, earlier. If I close this, you can see that we are still having some issues. So if I select this pressure, you can see we are still having some these huge numbers. But the way I, so I solved it was very uh, simple. Two options. So the first one here is to make sure that at least you, even if you provide the maximum and um initial level with the same values so the value of the initial level and the maximum to be the same which for our case is three meters then you need to make sure that at least you allow your storage tank to overflow so if i set here yes then and i run my my model you can see that we don't have those errors anymore but this for the second solution even if you set here no just make sure that you have the maximum level greater than the initial level which for my case here was three and now i need to make sure that i set the maximum level as 3.2 any value that is greater than the initial level value so if i close this you can see i don't have that error anymore okay so this is what we had but if you look at this area closely you can see that the value that we need for our pump is 34.5 0.58 okay so 34.58 which is quite the same with what we had on the previous tutorial which for our case was at just 34.5 meters of water column as you can see we don't have any significant difference between the two values and uh, for me i think they are almost the same okay they are almost the same so for this network again by using ethernet software the pump that we need for our network is 34.58 meters of water column and also the discharge that we need for our network the discharge that we need for our pump it need to be 2.5 liters per second again we are pumping from this area here to all the way to our storage tank which is at uh, this one so that is what i wanted to share with you guys you can tell the value that we got with water gems and ipanet they are quite the same okay they are quite the same so now that you are learning how to size water pumps by using Ethernet software, I strongly advise you to go and watch uh, the playlist which will be displayed on this uh, screen here. And also the link to this playlist will be on the description, also on the first comment below. I strongly advise you to go and watch that playlist because it has some other tutorials on how to size water pumps by using Ethernet software. So just go and watch it. That being said, I'll see you on that playlist.